Okay, Kim Wilson back here with the technique card from our April card class. And I got the idea for this technique from right from the Stampin' Up! corporate webpage. One of the artisans there um, posted this card where she had made three cards um, as kind of a series um, with just strips of designer series paper. And since I wanted to use six by six paper, I couldn't do all three at once. So I um, I cut my window sheet down and just did um, did this one um, with one one sheet and then this one with another, these two with another sheet. So I'm going to show you how to do the the really fun one, and that is this really cool kind of quilted look. And um, the secret to this technique is to use window sheets. So let me get um, get our strips of window sheets out of our kit here. And I've got, um, I think this is balmy blue cardstock, and pretty soon we'll be able to use boho blue, which I thought was going to be a light blue, but it's actually a darker than the balmy blue. So I'm excited to be using some new blue colors because um, I think greens and blues are my favorite colors. It's hard to decide which. Okay, there's my piece of window sheet, and we do sell sell that as well. It's handy for a lot of different techniques, and then we're gonna use um this is going to be our our mat knight of navy we used knight of navy for all three cards because it it was one of the coordinating colors for all of them okay now i did this so long ago it's hopefully i'll remember how to do it and it's all written down on the instruction sheet as well so you can um make that make that at home if you have the kit i um cut all the strips so there are they are ready to go. If you have any little die cut pieces, um, you might need to get your take your pick tool out. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find my label sheet here. There it is. Because I didn't go through and poke out all the little excess pieces. I figured you could... Um, most people have a little tool like this that can poke out anything. That one looks like looks good, but some of these little flowers here still have the little pieces left so I'm going to poke those out because those are going to be glued right on the top of the corresponding ones on that cute little label and this one um, I'm using the sentimental park bundle and again it's got some gorgeous sentiments and then some really cool dyes and it's got um, the ones with the flowers on it and it's also got this really handy um, label die that's Kind of a standalone die that you can use with anything and a really nice bundle and again that one will be in the new catalog but not at the bundled discounted price all right so i've got my window sheet down here and um the secret to this this whole card is just to lay out everything ahead of time so you get it how you want it um, before you just start willy-nilly gluing everything down because then you're then you're stuck. All right, so I'm going to kind of um, find an, find a, an order of these that looks good to me. And I just cut the 6x6 six six paper, cut it in strips. If you have other sizes of paper, just use what you have. So you, you can use scraps or whatever. Um, let's see. Let's do this one on the bottom and then maybe this one. How does that look? All right, and you're um, going to have about, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch gap between all of these strips on the on the window sheet. So, um, okay, now that I have it exactly where I want it, I'm going to flip everything over to the back because I'm going to put sticky strip all across the back of the sheet. And that is the real secret, especially if you're doing this um, version of the card with all the um, all those pieces. Because, oops, I think I already turned that one, didn't I? Yes. All right. Because um, once you get them all cut, you don't want your little squares falling off the window sheet. So every piece has to have adhesive on the back of it, and it needs to be a you know a fairly strong adhesive. So I am using sticky strip. If you have a nice strong tape runner, that would work as well, or a good layer of the liquid glue, although that's going to be a little bit 
you know, sliding around. So really the tear and tape is your best bet. So I'm it's going to take a little while to do this card, but once we get done, it's going to be really, really cool. So I am working on a um, silicone mat because... When I put this together, I'm not really, really measuring exactly how much tear and tape I need to go across. I just want to make sure it goes all the way across. So it's going to be hanging off the edge a little bit. So that way I have my silicone mat here so I'm not getting my work surface all covered with adhesive. All right, um, bone folder. I am just going to make sure that all of those are down tightly. So at least on the edge I start with because then I can peel that off better. Okay, now we'll get started. Sorry if this is going to take a while, but maybe I'll scoot ahead once I get started. If I can do that, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to leave a little gap at the top with my window sheet. I don't know if you can see that right there, a little gap. It looks like we have about a an eighth of an inch between all the pieces and you can kind of see by my sample on the PDF instructions how that's going to look. Okay, we got three down. So it's going, this is the, uh, the second time for me to make it and so it's going a lot faster the second time than it did the first time because First time always takes longer. But this Sentimental Park paper, actually, I guess it's called Regency Park, is really cool. And I forgot to mention before, but all three of these, okay, now I'm going to lay these other three down because I think I'm making them a little too close together here. So, how are we doing? Okay, I need to make my gaps just a little bit bigger. I wonder if I can peel that off. Nope, it's down. So, we'll just have to live with it. But I started to say all of the papers um, in the mini catalog, and we used three of them today. All of them are retiring. Even though the bundles are carrying over uh, as separate stamps and die sets, um, the papers, I wish they would keep the papers longer because they retire them after one year. And so if you want to grab them, I would soon, soon, soon. Yeah, I think I could have used, um, could have left a little bit of uh, bigger gaps between because I have more at the bottom than I did at the top, but that's not too bad. So I've got all my pieces across the window sheet, and now if I was going to um, make this card with the uneven pieces, I could just leave it like that and just cut off a little bit of it and then maybe have the rest of it left for um, a card like this. So if you um, don't want the challenge of doing the diagonal squares like we're doing next, then just stop here and work with what you have here. You can just trim up the edges off of, the, um, off of that window sheet. And I'm going to grab my paper snips and... Um, I'm going to need to have all my pieces even, so I'm just going to go through and trim these off, and I'm probably going to get a little bit of adhesive on my scissors, but there's ways to clean off your scissors. You can use Goo Gone, you can use, um, let's see, what else have I used? Even um, um, hand sanitizer is good to clean your acrylic blocks and your scissors. So there's different ways you can get those clean. You know, I've got all those extra pieces, and who knows, maybe I could use those for something. All right, but I'm glad I used my silicone mat, because now my work surface is clean, and I can finish this card up. All right, so as, as I said before, you could go with this as it is now, but if you do want to have this really fun background this is what you do so these are half inch strips i don't think i mentioned that before half inch strips so now since we're making squares we want to make half inch strips again so we're just going to take that window sheet and cut half inch strips so i'm actually going to start from this side i think it'll be a little easier to cut on my trimmer i think i used my paper trimmer on all three of these projects today and i also 
is tear and tape on all three projects. I guess it was just time to do that. And I don't think these need to be kept in any particular order because we're just, and, and I'm actually um, cutting from the back side because I remembered I did not use the yellow piece. Um, so that's going to be hidden. Okay. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Let's see. I think I'm not going to get a full eight strips out of this the way I did it. But hopefully this will be good enough. All right, we'll put this away. And now we're going to grab um, the white piece that was in the kit. So where did I put that? Right here. So now we're going to work with these strips. And, oh, you can see this one's coming off right there because I did not get my sticky strip. Um, far enough across on that one. So that is the issue. When we were doing this at the craft retreat, that was an issue some people were having was the squares were not sticking. But with the sticky, st or the with the tear and tape, that it stays for the most part really nicely across. And so we have all these strips here. And you can um, try to alternate them back and forth to get the patterns together, but I don't know, that was that seems like a lot of work, so I may or may not do that. So now it's just arranging them in a nice diagonal fashion to get them onto the card. And we'll be piecing some of the extra bits too, because obviously I don't have enough to Actually, that worked out pretty well. If you looked at this pattern, it's alternating back and forth like that. So you can try to do that if you want, or it's not not that crucial. All right, I think I'm going to need my silicone mat again because we're going to run into the same issue with um, glue coming off the edges here. And just in the interest of time, I think I'll go ahead and use the liquid adhesive. I think it's a little faster, so we're going to work on these strips to get them across. Just gluing the back of the window sheet there. You just have to be a little careful because they are shifting a little bit. Okay few more strips here. As you can see, this technique is a little fussy, but it's not that difficult once you get your first one under your belt. And it really is a cool technique. And this will be a card for somebody special that will appreciate it, not somebody that's going to just say, oh, that's nice, and throw it away. I like to at least display my cards for a little while um, after I get them. I have this little I don't know if I can tilt the camera a little bit. I have this little display board right there. Yes, there it is with some of the cards people have sent me. And um, I like to like to look at them. It makes, makes me happy. Makes me happy to make them and to look at the handmade cards. Okay, I've used all my strips now. So now I'm going to go through... Um, since I used the liquid glue, I probably should wait a little bit before I cut those off. But in the interest of time, I will just try to be careful and cut off some of these edges here. And I'm wondering, I must have miscalculated somehow when I did that. I'm wondering if I could use that little bit. might be able to use that little bit too that was... Um, too small just because I don't think I have enough extra pieces to go across. We'll patch that in there and that way I have um, 
some extra pieces to piece in when I'm putting the card together. So we'll be cutting off the extra pieces. It's actually better to cut from the back because I just cut right into my cardstock. Okay, cut from the back. Get all those cut. I don't know. Are you a perfect perfectionist when you're making cards? Sometimes I am, but then sometimes it's like, oh, that's good enough. And sometimes good enough is pretty good. All right, so I actually do have that one that can go across that gap there. And I have this piece here. Oh, that's even cut exactly at the right angle. So we'll put that one across the bottom. Perfect. And then that one will just kind of stick in the middle. Okay, and I'm going to let that sit and um, adhere together, but you can see I just have a little bit more trimming to do and then it's ready to go. So we'll move that aside and get the, um, the label out. So here's the label piece. And I stamped Dear Friend from Sentimental Park, but there's also Let's Celebrate, Thinking of You, Thanks. So there's a lot of different fun greetings there. But Dear Friend is good because you can just put about just about anything on the inside. Then you can do a happy birthday or thinking of you on the inside. And, oh, and I still have my little flowers. I didn't lose them. Amazing. So these little tiny die cut flowers actually match up perfectly if I get them in the right orientation here with this um, label die cut. Okay, one more. Can I do it? Yes, there we go. So that's going to go. And again, I forgot to get the dimensionables, but that is going to go on top of there and then We'll mat that on our, oops, sorry, on our Knight of Navy, oops, got cardstock strips on our cardstock there. So that'll mount onto there. And then this will mount onto our card. And then our label on top. So there it is. So a little longer than um, many of the technique cards we do, but so worth it to see that really fun technique with the uh, different strips. Um, kind of a quilted look but with the window sheet it also gives it a little bit of a, a shine to it too as you can see when I'm tilting it like that so give it a try and if you don't want to take the time to do all the little squares then just stop with the um, piece like this and then you'll be um, um, that'll take a, lo a little less time to put together or uh, go a little rogue and come up with some sort of strange pattern like that one. So however you want to do it, um, play with your designer series paper strips and have fun with that. Happy crafting, everyone.